The original G502 Proteus core from 2014 was RGBified in 2016 and then got an upgrade to Logitech's Hero Sensor in 2018. But through all that time, and certainly since the debut of the G903 Lightspeed in 2017, G502 fans have been wondering when Logitech would finally cut the cord on their favorite mouse. And now that it's here, there's really only one question. Has Logitech left us any reason not to go wireless? Actually, two questions. Is there any reason not to check out our sponsor? Cable Mod just opened up a new factory and they now guarantee delivery in under two weeks. Get 15% off with offer code May 15th before the 27th of May at the link below. Traditionally, there have been three main reasons not to get a wireless mouse. So let's start with the big one, latency. Does the new wireless G502 introduce any extra delay between moving the mouse and seeing the response on the screen? That is beyond what you'd get with the wired version because even a wire does have some latency. Now answering this question is a little tough for us because we don't have a warehouse full of the necessary scientific equipment to quantitatively measure mouse latency to the degree that we'd like. What we can test, however, is whether or not the average gamer will be able to tell the difference. So we unleashed our fiercest keyboard warriors on a high performance gaming rig outfitted with one wired G502 Hero and one wireless G502 Lightspeed that had been mocked up to appear wired. Both of our mice were configured to the same DPI and our subjects were instructed to focus on just one variable, latency. Oh God, that was embarrassing. Blame the mouse. The mouse, is the mouse. <laughs> okay, so we have a hero and a light speed. Well, they're all a hero. Oh, this one for sure. No, I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. If you told me they were the same mouse, I would believe you. And I'm pretty sure even if we had like a 240 hertz display, I would not be able to tell the difference. I don't know, just for some reason, just something about it just feels nicer to me. If you had to guess which one's which, would you? Would it just be a uh, pure guess, like flipping a coin? Yeah, it would have it been pure guess. I don't, I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. If I was gonna make a call, I guess it would have to be this one, so that's the wireless mouse. Oh, that's a wireless mouse and this is the wired one. Okay, Yeah. thanks. Oh, oh. you're wrong. Oh. <laughs> so then, considering these test results, the tournament winning pro gamers who use Logitech wireless mice and the more quantitative demos that we've seen from Logitech themselves in the past, we're convinced that there is in fact merit to Logitech's claims that Lightspeed's end-to-end -end optimized 2.4 gigahertz connection is indistinguishable from a wired connection. So let's move on, because latency isn't everything. Another demerit against most wireless mice is weight. A wireless mouse is required to carry an onboard battery, making it heavier than its wired counterpart, it's sort of by definition. So if the G502 Hero, a mouse with the same shape, size, buttons, and sensor, tips the scales at 121 grams already, then how much would we expect the Lightspeed version to weigh? Now you might think that that's a trick question and you're expecting me to tell you, ha ha, it's the same weight. But no, Logitech has actually done us one better, managing to make the wireless version seven grams lighter than its wired predecessors. And this is while still managing up to 60 hours of gameplay on a single charge of its quick charging lithium ion battery. Furthermore, it's PowerPlay compatible. So if you get the wireless charging mouse pad, you'll never have to think about charging at all. So then how did they do that? Turns out with great difficulty. See, keeping the exact same exterior while redesigning all of the internals is likely the main reason that fans had to wait this long for this mouse, because despite their near identical look, apparently the only component that wasn't altered in some way was actually the slippy skates on the bottom of the mouse. So while a typical mouse gets its structural integrity from the outer shell, this one's walls had to be cut down to just 1.2 millimeters thick. So then to maintain its rigidity, 
Logitech used a lightweight internal endoskeleton. This is a similar design to what they use on the G Pro Wireless. Then, again borrowing from the G Pro Wireless, they added very subtle, but appreciated mechanical spring button tensioning to the left and right clicks, removing pre-travel and helping the button recover from a click faster and with more precision. And even like, this is crazy, even the scroll wheel was altered. It's lighter, but it still manages to feel the same. So like, yeah, there's a, there's a gap. There's a gap in the middle. So, all right, weight and latency are non-issues. But what about the third and final wireless woe, price? Well, unfortunately, this is the G502 Lightspeed's gotcha moment. Because like the G903 and the G Pro Wireless, this puppy is 150 US dollars, nearly double the price of its wired cousin. Which raises an important question. If you're going to spend that much then, is this the mouse that you want? And that really depends. Because the thing is, for many gamers, even the new G502 with its seven grams of weight shed is still way too heavy. Popular gaming mice from competitors like Final Mouse are much lighter along with being much cheaper. And Logitech themselves has the G Pro Wireless, which is the same price, but only 80 grams. With that said, if you love the shape of the G502, you need 11 programmable buttons, and you can't live without a hyper fast scroll wheel, then this could be the last mouse that you ever buy. And who knows, maybe you can recoup some of the cost by selling the wired version that you're probably already using. Speaking of already using, if you're not already using Ting, then go check them out. Ting is the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and customer satisfaction. With Ting, you pay only for what you use and the average bill is just 23 bucks a month per device. They've got no contracts, so you can try them out risk-free. And if you're stuck in a contract and switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to 75 bucks. They've got nationwide coverage from coast to coast in the US and they'll never block, throttle or interfere with your online access. So go check out the Ting Savings Calculator at linus.ting.com to find out how much you'd save on Ting. And if you use our link, you'll get 25 bucks in Ting credit towards your bill or a new device. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one. Yep, like this one. And our community forum, which you should totally join.